So we're, let's just let's just go before the throne room. You know, when we pray today, we're going to talk about the throne room again. So when we pray, doesn't matter what we're praying for. We pray for our meal. We can pray for whatever. But we can know that God hears us in His throne room, and because we've just studied the tabernacle, we can rest assured that it has to do with the tabernacle because I think he loves the tabernacle more than we can even imagine and is his throne room in the middle of that tabernacle in the holy of holies boy it just makes you wonder <laughs> and it makes you wonder how big that thing is up there and how how is is that where the 24 and 7 elders are seated amongst the lampstand amongst the seven spirits of I mean you think about it this we we when we address God in prayer, it's a powerful thing because we're going to the throne directly, and it's like all of heaven's power is there, hearing us. And is He able to heal? And is He able to take care of us? And is He able to save? And is He able to do everything we ask in agreement with heaven? Yes. So. Let's go to the throne room. <laughs> so, Heavenly Father, we just, right now, we join that 24-7 prayer meeting that's going on in the yes. heavenlies. And we just say, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who rules and reigns yesterday, today, and forever. And you are the one that we love. And Father, you love us, and you bent your ear toward us today. You're not deaf toward us because we're smaller in numbers or whatever. You're not, you're like, oh, this is not a mega church, so therefore I'm busy. No, in fact, I think you turn more toward us when we're in times like these and when we're in this, the quiet place with you, and you go, boy, I, am, I see their hearts are completely torn, turned toward me. And I want them. I want to talk to them today. So, Father, today we open up our hearts. We ask you to teach us. We ask, God, that, um, that all of heaven, we just ask, Father, that the doors of heaven will open toward us today, that we may hear revelation. Even what I speak may not be what, the person, what each one in this room hears, because we know that the Holy Spirit runs it through the grid in our heart and teaches us what we need. And so we give you permission right now to do that here in this room. And we just thank you, Father, that you are going to help us to hear everything that you want to speak to us today. Boy, we give you glory. Woo! Thank you, Lord. All praise, all honor be to the King of kings, the Lord of lords. High and lifted up are you, Lord. Your glory fills the temple. The train, it says the train of your glory. Wow. The glory fills the temple. Who you are fills the temple. We give you glory. We give you all praise, all honor. Your name is high above all names. And we just lift you in Jesus' name. All right, let's turn to the word. Turn that mic up a little more, maybe. Yes, I, I will. Be and I think I'll turn the... Let's down. see, let's turn this the piano down just a little bit. Yeah, let's see if that see how's that? Okay. Let's try that. It's oh, real touchy. Is that nice. good? Okay. All right. Thank you, dear. It's so good to have Bobby here today. And Sandy's boy. <laughs> We're so grateful um, that they got it's her birthday. Happy birthday, Sandy. It's on that day. Saturday, yes. <laughs> <Yay. laughs> we should sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bobby. Happy birthday to you. And blessings on you. Exactly. That's right. Does anybody else have a birthday right now? We should check. Anybody else? No? All right. We don't want to do this. <laughs> anniversary. And who? Whose anniversary? Bobby's been out here for 20 years. Bobby? She came out here 20 years ago. Is that right? Wow. Been here in Colorado to be, here to be with you. 
Well, you're what so a worthy blessed. cause. You're so blessed. You're so, so blessed. So blessed. That's exactly right. That's so good. Praise the Lord. The Lord knows who we need in our life, He's right? He's the best matchmaker ever. He is the best matchmaker, right? Truly. <laughs> he knows who we need. He knows what we need. I was always, when I was going to have another baby, I would think, well, Lord, you're sending us another one from heaven. You must know we need this baby. So praise the Lord. <laughs> no matter what I thought about it, it was like, yes. <laughs> it was like, I'm glad. Thank you, Jesus. But sometimes you're like, wow, Jesus. But it's the yes is in our heart. The yes is in our heart. All right. So how are we on the keyboard? Is it a little bit? Are we good? Okay. It's right behind me, so I just have to make sure it's good for everybody. Okay. So... In your notes, we're kind of on page three, or it'll say session one. And last week we read chapters two and three, where we read the churches, right? And what we learned on the churches, which, I mean, we knew this, didn't we? But we learned it, is where the first thing that, and it's remember that, when he's talking, chapter 2 and 3, when he's talking to the churches, he says everything's in red letters, right? So it's Jesus himself talking. And the first thing he does is he talks about himself every single time. And he says, here I am, the one you love, basically. <laughs> here I am, basically. And my books did make it last week, so glory to Jesus. Uh, it was a wonder, it was just, it was perfect. It couldn't have been any better. First, I'm just going to read through real quickly what Jesus says about himself. Chapter 2, verse 1. These things says, He who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. That's Jesus. Okay, the second one is verse 8. Chapter 2, verse 8. These things says the first and last, who was dead, and who came to life, I know your works. Okay, well, that's, it's, it's, the most thing I wanna concentrate on is, he's the first and the last. He was dead, but he came back to life. I mean, this is Jesus talking. Pergamus, here's what he says, verse 12. These things says he who has a sharp two-edged sword. I mean, isn't it amazing that he talks about himself this way? I have a sharp two-edged sword. Remember, this is a, that's a good picture of him over there. Um, we, we know the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, right? He is the word of God, and he is sharper than any two-edged sword. So we just thank the Lord for that. Let's go down to Thyatira, and let's look at verse 18, chapter 2, verse 18, which says... These things, says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. All right, let's go to chapter 3. Don't you love that Jesus, he's not worried about one thing. He's just describing who he is. He just says, this is who I am. Um, chapter 3, verse 1. These things, says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Ah, that's so good. Now let's go to verse 6, chapter 3, verse 6, to the Philadelphia church. Jesus said about himself, he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. Is that so good? <laughs> so we know what the Lord shuts. He's, he's, uh, let's see, angle. And then the church of Laodicea, the lukewarm church, here's what he says about himself. These things, says the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Oh, my God. The beginning, yours says the beginning. Mine says the beginning. What's your say? The ruler. The ruler. There's a big difference in those two. Words. You're right. True witness the ruler of the creation of God. This is New King James. Yeah, that's interesting. What version? Yes. Complete Jewish. Complete Jewish. It's, you know, I'll have to look all the 
That's really interesting. That's I love that that he is the ruler. Does it? What what version do you have? NIV. That's that's exactly right. He is the ruler. And remember in Laod in the Laodicean church, verse twenty, it says, "Behold, I stand." And that's red letters. That's Jesus Himself standing at the door of the church, and He's knocking on the door. Will we open that door? Um, he said, "Is if anybody hears my voice, isn't that something that I believe that in the last since the 1980s we've had a revival of hearing the voice of the Lord? Praise God!" That then you've got others in the church who say, no, you can't hear the voice of God. But we say, yes, you can. And even right here, he says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. So that's where we want to be. We know that uh, Jesus himself is saying, I want to talk to you. All right, so let's now let's get to uh, chapter 4. chapter 4 and let's um, what what Mike Bickle calls the beauty realm of God so that's what chapter 4 is all about mm -hmm. is the throne room of heaven you know I could I never even thought about how connected the book of Revelation is to the tabernacle now I'm like well duh it's common sense <laughs> but you, when we did that in depth study now I'm like now I see it more clearly I mean, it just makes a lot more sense when we talk about the throne room of heaven and the pattern of heaven. And if the, if, the, if the throne room and the tabernacle are two different things because Moses, you know, got the, that's fine with me. But I'm just saying, Jesus talks in tabernacle language all the way through the book of Revelation because we're going to see um, the different elements whether it's all together in heaven or it's all, you know, in one area, this area or not, who knows? <laughs> we'll know when we get there, right? And that's not what's important, but what is important is how connected it is, right? How the Lord speaks in the same language, everything he does. It's all the way through the Word of God. That's why when we look at the book of Revelation, we can say, well, let's go back to Isaiah. Let's go back to Genesis. Let's go back to Exodus and we can find all of these elements of what's going to happen in the book of Revelation all the way through the word of God. Not ignoring any of the prophets. It's amazing. It's shocking how, how the Lord speaks. Alright. So let's talk about the throne room. Okay, let's read. Oh boy. Yeah, let's just go ahead and start with uh, Revelation 4. Who would like to read? As long as you know, I'll probably stop you at some point. But Revelation 4 is a very short chapter. So let's go ahead and start, and then we'll just kind of back up and go over it. Who would like to read? Anybody? Revelation 4. Either one. Megan, would you do it this time? And then I'll have Connie read the next. Uh, go ahead and just read through four. After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven, with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, a rainbow resembling an emerald and circles and circles. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, and the second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under his wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, 
who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, Let, Let's say this together. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created amen glory to god <laughs> all right so um there are something like 24 hymns in the book of revelation and that's two of them that we just read right there and we just say these will be sung in heaven we will be we will be joining in uh those songs you know i was listening to john thurlow this morning and he was talking about a song that he had written about uh, something about um, heaven and just the, the holiness of god the awesomeness of god and uh, he said we were in the prayer room and we were singing and all of a sudden this song just came and there's a lot of songs that just come like that I re another song uh, more power more love more power more of you that's one breathe I remember when the vineyard movement was yes. going full more the song breathe came out this is the air I breathe and she they said she sang that song straight out there was no no practice, no in, you know, nothing. It was like she sang it straight out. And uh, her husband was actually teaching at uh, a worship conference I was at. And he said, I was sure hoping they were recording because <laughs> that was a great song. And she, he said, I've never heard it before. It was his wife singing it. And, um, and uh, thankfully they were because that was song was so precious. Praise the Lord. Breathe. Yes, this is the air I breathe. Amen. But these songs will be sung in heaven. We'll know them all when we get there. We'll sing along, right, with the angels, and we will rejoice in the in the heavenly realm of what's going on. So while we're looking at Revelation 4, we're think about it for a second, because this is Jesus who is talking about what's to come. This is Jesus saying, he's setting the groundwork. He's saying, this is who I am. This is who I am. I feel like we've had, since Jesus, we booted Jesus out uh, in, in Genesis 3, where we couldn't walk in the garden with him anymore. And, and we were the ones who cut him off from the land of the living, right? And that's what it says in Psalms, or in, excuse me, in Isaiah. And hello, dear. It's good to see you. Um, we were the ones who did that. We cut him off. But there's going to be a day where he comes back. Now, he came back and he paid at the cross, right? It's been 2,000 more years. We invited him down. We say, your kingdom come, your will be done. But one day, he will bring his kingdom. It will come. We're on the way to that right now. Every day we go, we are closer to his kingdom actually coming. And this Jesus ruling here on earth it's a different picture than a baby coming in a manger all right we know that story and when he comes and he rules we don't want to be offended by how he rules right. because he's going to bring a lot of correction with him <laughs> and if we're being corrected now we're in the right place, right? Yes. Jesus judged my heart today. Yeah. Jesus changed my heart today. Work on me. I want to hear your voice. So we want to be careful that we stay in that place of humility, that we stay close to him, and that we not uh, veer too far, veer out. You know, we all veer out. I, I had somebody saying to me the other day, you know, I feel like I just walk away from the Lord everyone I said we all we all do that it's normal but the thing is is we go we got to go wait wait <laughs> I just I just turned I just walked away I got too busy whatever whatever it is yeah, we just turn around and come back yeah. 
right? <laughs> and we don't yeah. and we don't worry about how that looks because it doesn't God's not bring it. It's us that gets you know, we get to feel guilty. Well and that's the time when the enemy comes in and accuses, Oh, look what you did. Yeah. You just walked away. Yes. Again, right? <laughs> you just walked away again. <laughs> but it's it's not his business. It's God's business. Yeah. And and so we run to him. He's yeah. we are his children and we want to walk with him right back to him. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans eight, right? Okay. All right, so what's going on in chapter 4 is laying down the groundwork of the heavenly thing that's going to happen next. And when you say, you know, when I say that, it's like, wait a minute, we're going to see all hell break loose. But we're talking about the Jesus who is from heaven, who is ruling during this time. He knows what's happening. He's not worried about it. He has his hands on this whole thing. Okay, so. I love this too. Jesus is the son of David. When we get to heaven, you're still going to be the same person that you are. Jesus comes back here to earth to rule and reign. He's the same Jesus that left. He's still, he wants to keep his name. He's the son of man. He's the son of man. He says that, uses that term, his name, more than he uses on the son of God. Hmm. Is that wild? Because he loves being like us. Remember that. When you think, Jesus, you don't get this, he does. He understands. He's more man, I think, than, than any of us. <laughs> he, is, he is the man. All right. Oh, he loves that. Okay, he's the, and he says, I'm the son of David. That's a, I mean, that's his way of connecting. So he'll be Jewish when he, come, when he returns. He'll still be Jewish. I'm Irish. I'll still be Irish. <laughs> Jesus loves every tribe, tongue, yes. and nation, and he gave us our heritage. I think it's pretty amazing that people have been, like, digging into their genealogy. Yeah. We need to know who we are, where we came from, because one day it will be, it, I think it will be even more important in the next oh, wow. realm than it is now. Wow. We think it is important now, and it is, but we're going to have more authority I think that we'll, I'm glad I'm from Ireland because I really want to be there. <laughs> I really want to be in Israel, but I want to be in Ireland too. So I, that means I'm guaranteed to get there at some point in this time. Because <laughs> I keep thinking, I, I keep thinking I want to go and I, I haven't been there yet. And so I'm like, come on, come on. Last year I was like, come on. <laughs> okay, but Jesus was, he was, is, and he will always be. Um, what's ma amazing is it that this Jesus will rule this earth as, as the ruling king. Now we know what presidents are. We know what can happen when a president comes in and does good. And we know what it can happen when a president comes in and does evil. We can, we've watched both real clearly in the last few years. <laughs> we went, somebody loves America. Wow, that's a great, we love that. We love that. And then we know somebody who's not going to stand up for America and our rights. And that's very difficult. So Jesus, though, he will stand up for heaven, for himself, for his government. And he will stand up for you as well. So he's got your best interest in, in, in at heart. He's got his perfect will at heart because he knows what needs to happen for him to rule and reign in this on this earth. Okay, so he's going to have a physical body. Remember, he kept his body and a resurrected body, but he will rule all of the nations, all of the nations of the earth. All right. And he will have everything. I just want you to think about he will have all of the resources of this planet. And this planet is rich. We're not going to run out. Do you remember when they used to tell us we're going to run out of oil? We're yeah. going to run out of water. We're going to run out of food. We're going to run out. No, we're not. Unless they destroy it, which that's their goal. Destroy it, right? Mm -hmm. It says, and it says in the word, we're going to read that. Where it says, those who, those who, just, I will, he said, Jesus said, God says himself, 
I will destroy those who destroy the earth. Wow. And that is a great comfort right now because we're watching things happen in the earth um, where they do want to destroy the earth. Mm. And it's quite shocking. I watch a, a video every once in a while by a guy who studies, um, uh, he's, a climate, he's a climate guy, but he's also a geologist and a, um, but he understands oceans and, and he understands the atmosphere and a lot of this stuff. And I'm watching it and he's- What's his name? Yeah. Boy, good question. <laughs> anyway, but it's something about geophysicist or farms or weather, and he does a whole lot on the weather, and it's really fascinating what he has to say. So we know that there's a lot of earthquakes happening. We know that there's all yeah. of these things happening, but we know God is the one who will restore everything. All right. When he says, I love that, that it said carnelian in the place of sardius, He's the one who said there was like a jasper and a carnelian. And the other day, I don't know if I told you guys, I woke up, I think it was on a Thursday morning. I may have told you last week that I woke up with the word carnelian. It was like somebody said carnelian. And I woke up and I thought, oh, carnelian, <laughs> what was that? And, yeah. and I went and looked it up because I was like, I don't think of that. I don't ever think of that word. <laughs> and I didn't know what it was, and I went and I knew it was a stone, but I went and looked oh. it up. And it's that, uh, it's a deep orange stone. I actually have it over there in that box of uh, stones from the, from the uh, New Jerusalem. It's a deep orange, beautiful stone. And they say the longer it sits out in the sun, the deeper orange it gets, which is really fascinating. Wow. So, Whenever you get a word like that, always go and research it because the Lord will give you things that you need to look at. So that even makes more sense that the throne, here it is, he is like Carnelian. I love that. That was in uh, chapter 4 of Revelation, and it says, verse 3, he who sat there was like a Jasper and a Carnelian or a Sardius. My Bible says Sardius. So, in appearance. Carnelian, yeah, and that was in the. In, 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 did you say NIV? Uh huh. No, it's Jewish. Oh no, no, no. That was Helen's Bible. Was the Jewish Bible? Helen, yeah, what does right. your Bible say there in verse three? I'm, I'm just writing them down because they're all different. Oh, they're all different. Verse three, the one seen as being like diamonds and rubies. Diamonds. Oh. Say it again. Diamonds and rubies. Oh. Isn't that interesting? Oh, Do you have another thought? Well, the jasper is it's multi. -color. It's an aggregate. Yeah. Jasper, so orange, basically, but and Kasadani would be diamond word, and you know these aren't familiar to us. We right. Don't, so it's a that mixed stone, the mixture of. Right. Well, remember, it's like a rainbow anyway around mm -hmm. the throne. Right. And so, I mean, honestly, we ran into this when you're studying about the banners. You have to find the stone for each tribe, and we don't have a tribal banner down here right now, but we, Helen and I, <laughs> you know, we're looking them all up, and we're like, well, it could be this color, it could be this color, it could be this color, because look at just topaz. Topaz paths can be any, I mean, yeah, yeah, a myriad like of colors. And so we know it's the mineral makeup, but you also wonder, what that throne is actually going to look like. <laughs> Let's just say it's going to be brilliant. So, okay. All right. And the lightnings and the thunders. And um, and then, let's see. Just the beauty of God when he's talking about all of these things. I mean, just imagine the throne room and the, just the, the glorious thing that's, that's happening on the throne. And so... Uh, let's go now. Let's see. Verse, was it five? Let me see. Around the throne, in appearance like the emerald. I saw the four now elders clothed in white robes. They had a field of gold on their head. So I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes. They had crowns of gold on their heads. From the, from the throne proceeded lightning, thundering, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. I was um, thinking about this today, actually, when I walked in, because when I walked in for the first time, I always turn on uh, house prayer or some a different worship than what's on the radio, 
and I walked over there and I thought, oh, what must it be like to walk in the seven, amidst seven candlesticks? Mm. I want to see that. That, uh, well, and we kind of have a candlestick here with the name, <laughs> you know, it looks like a candle to me with fire on top. But just walking over there, and I just, I was thinking because we are in this segment of scripture. All right. And then um, let's go back to chapter 15 of Revelation. And let's read this now, it just because it's so good. Chapter 15 of Revelation. And I'll start reading just for time. Then I saw another sign in heaven great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them the wrath of God is complete and I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire what is the labor called in scripture what's the golden labor called or not the golden labor but the labor that's outside the brave by the brazen altar the sea of glass right the sea and so and um, something like a sea of glass mingled with fire and those who have victory over the beast over his image and over his mark over the number of his name are standing on the sea of glass having harps of God they sing the song of Moses I just want you to catch Moses because it's very connected to this okay the servant of God and the song of the Lamb sang and if you want let's say it together great and marvelous are your works Lord God Almighty just and true are your ways O King of the saints who shall not fear you O Lord and glorify your name for you alone are holy for all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. After these things, I looked and behold, the temple, the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And out of the temple came seven angels, having seven plagues, clothed in pure bright linen, having their chests girded with the golden bands. And one of the four living creatures, what are the four living creatures? The, uh, they look like an ox, looks like a eagle, looks like a, a man, and a lion. That's exactly right. Four living creatures. Isn't this tabernacle language? Shockingly, it's so good. So having their chest girded with golden bands, one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God, who lives forever. Who's in charge of the wrath of God? God himself right <laughs> and the angels are holding it just holding it for a time <laughs> until until it's fully ready the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power and no one was able to enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed now that is going to happen at a later time in our study but I wanted you to see the temple the tabernacle talk about that crystal sea in front of the throne, all the glory of the rainbow, the colors mirrored in that crystal sea. How many of you have ever been to the ocean and you've just said, this is the most beautiful thing? Mm -hmm. Or you go to a, a very still pond or lake mm -hmm. and you're just like, everything is, is mirrored in this. It's just incredible. So think about that mingled with fire and, and just knowing that the fire of God is all over this sea and knowing that um, this place in heaven is where all of the angels are meeting now. You know, the Lord is like, here I am, we're going to talk. This, my glory is all over this sea, but also um, the um, all my, I, I kind of like, I brought everybody in, and we're going to have this convocation, we're going to have this time, and we're going to talk together. It's just a key moment. Chapter 15 is a really a key moment in the time of heaven. Um, oh, so good. Here's the deal. 
we know that all of heaven is in partnership during this time. So we want to be in partnership with him, right? It's not just heaven netting out what's happening. It's us in agreement with heaven. I know that when God begins the, re the book of Revelation, when he begins this time of tribulation, I want to be fully in agreement with him. I want to be saying, Lord, I'm catching what you're doing. And, okay, can we just say that this last year has been a birth pain, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay, I would say 20, oh, 2000 when 9-11 happened. I feel like that was a, a good birth pain, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we had a 20-year quiet time. And then, boom, we've had another birth pain. <laughs> Oh, oh, NOA, oh, the stock market, market crash. Yeah. So these little bitty ones in the middle, like tremors, yeah. right? Because, you know, when you go into labor, you can have false labor, but you can also have these, you know, things that you, what was that? I better pay attention. So, and then, then this 2020 was another big moment. I feel like it was a big moment on a whole lot of levels. We all thought, what will I put up with? What will I not put up with? How many rights will I give up? How many... Should I say something? Should I be quiet? It was just a big year for all of us to inter introspect. And I, I pray you all got closer to Jesus during that time. I felt like I did. but I, And I, I've noticed myself missing that time where I really did have a lot more time. <laughs> so we just want to be partnered with Jesus. And the book of Revelation, I mean, obviously what we're seeing in these first chapters is how God looks, how God feels, what he's thinking. I mean, these are the things that are really important, right? It's not about, Jesus, will you come back and just get me out of here? <laughs> it's really, who is this one that we serve and that we love? And what's he thinking? What's his plan? Can I trust him? And I want you to write that question down, even just in your notes. Can I trust him? Can I trust his plan? Is his plan better than my plan? Boy, yes and amen. Yes, amen. But his plan might look different than our thoughts of what his plan are, right? Yeah, sure. How many of you have gone through very difficult things and you've thought, Lord, I know you're going to get me out of this, but when is that going to be? And can, can we do it quickly? I, I think there were times in 2020 we thought, Lord, get this over with quickly. <laughs> but the Lord has purpose. Yeah. The Lord has purpose in everything he does. And so our job, and, and my whole last answer always when I was saying, Jesus, I want this to be over, I want this to be finished, my answer was always at the end, it was like, I know you have a plan, and I just bow to your plan. I agree with your plan. Your plan is better than mine. You know what I have to go through. You know what I have to um, learn to persevere with. You know what my thought process, how my thought process needs to change. And you're doing that. And I agree with you. You know, there's a lot of people who've become offended, even during this time. A lot of churches have closed. Uh, somebody was telling me how many churches have closed, like in their state. They were shocked. And, and I don't know how many have closed in Colorado, but many will not come back. It's, it is stun it's a stunning number, I'm sure. We opened during that. <laughs> Glory to God. Because <laughs> I wasn't going to shut down. I wasn't going to stop. So we're going to keep going. Okay. So. All right. Those are just extra notes that I had that I thought I don't want to miss that. All right. Now let's look at your notes that I had I handed out to you. So right there you'll see Revelation chapter 4 is the beauty realm of God, the beautiful realm of God, his throne room, his prayer meeting, and the power of God. And the power of God to deal with earth. I just think that we see he was, he is, he is to come. And, I mean, we, we get a glimpse of it. Let's just say it that way. Okay, let's look at chapter 5. The Lamb is going to take the scroll. Who would like to read We'll read clear through chapter 5, and then we'll jump in. Oh, yes, Connie. And 
and I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Okay, so I have a scroll here. I have a scroll. And I'm going to pass it around so you can all get a good look at it. But... Now, I'm sure this is not what it actually looks like, but this is kind of a representation. When I pulled it out of the box, I went, oh, yes, seven seals. <laughs> you know, I mean, we just have a under one understanding, and I don't know what I was thinking in my head, but I thought, oh, I like this. So anyway, I'll pass it around. You guys can all get your hands on it and look at it and see. Okay, go ahead, my dear. <laughs> so I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, to the lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, set out unto all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls of incense which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have been redeemed and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Say it together. To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such that are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the twenty-four elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. So, this is, this is like, you know, we can read through this, but this is so much drama. Um, can you imagine uh, what is happening when God has a hold of this throne, we know, or this uh, scroll. God himself, God the Father has a hold of this throne, this uh, scroll. Um, I sat in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll written on the inside and on the back. So there's so much on there that it's on both sides. It's double-sided. It's sealed with seven seals, which, what does a seal represent? Well, when a king puts his signet, his seal, on something, on a document or whatever, what is that? Authority. It's his authority. It's his, this is law, and this now will happen, okay? So, he, God is the one himself who has all authority, right? 
and he holds that title deed to the earth who else would hold it he created it yes. he says this is mine I own this place and here's my founding document I have it <laughs> it is it never went to the enemy it is firmly in God's hands <laughs> and then and that we can take full comfort in knowing that God is in control then I saw the strong angel proclaiming who is worthy wow who is worthy the only one who is worthy is our Jesus our son of man he's worthy because he left heaven came down here and paid for it right came down here took upon this flesh and said I am going to pay for this don't you love it? No one in heaven. There was this search that went out. This doesn't just take a second. This took some time. All right? The search goes out. No one in heaven or on earth or under the earth. Think about that search. Could it be in the depths of the earth? I don't know. Could it be in the universe? I don't know. <laughs> It, what, does anybody else's Bible say something on that? It's it's chapter five, verse three. <laughs> but why? If Jesus is there, why why does it say no one? Well, no one else oh. other than him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the search went out. I mean, isn't it interesting that the search goes out? Yeah. Because the, I, I think this was the time when God was proving to whoever, whoever wants to see, we're searching. Okay? Often, and, the, under, often under the, many times under the earth, the depths refer to demonic powers. Uh, which we, we also uh, allude to the center of the earth sometimes. We call it that's where because it's the bottomless pit the, you know the earth is rotating and it's the bottomless pit could it be i don't know i just reinforcing i think that the lack of power of the enemy yeah he's given so much power even by the church so much more than he deserves yeah. and the lack of power amen <laughs> that is exactly right he has no power i mean this is this one this is this one <laughs> we have no concern that our God does not have all power all honor all glory um, let's go to, to Philippians 2 as I'm going through my book again I'm on like okay I'm going to rewrite my notes again <laughs> Oh my gosh, I've done it so many times, but you can't, you learn more and you just can't stop putting it in. <laughs> Here we go again. We're going to learn more. Okay, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, two. <laughs> What'd you say? Go eat Go eat potato chips. Go eat potato chips. Galatians, flipping. <laughs> See, Flasha's last. That's good. Go eat potato chips. That's actually the best one I've heard. I say it all the time. I get lost in Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Okay, Philippians chapter 2. Okay, let's read. Uh, let's start at one. Okay, so uh, two, what, excuse me, ten. We need to read up to to verse ten for, or eleven for sure. Let's just start at one. Who would like to read? Okay. Yeah. This is New American Standard, I guess. Okay. If therefore there is any encouragement in Christ. If there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, 
maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, let each of you regard one another as more important than himself. Yes. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Yes. Who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. <clears throat> and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, also God highly exalted him and yes. bestowed on him the name, <laughs> name which, which is, is above, above every, every name. name. Amen. That at the name of Jesus, every, every knee shall bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Ooh, isn't that good? Yeah, yeah. So this is going to happen. I just want you to see how this is all through Scripture. That's Philippians. That's not the book of Revelation. Right, That's Philippians. Right. And the, the apostles, the disciples, they were with Jesus. Remember, with Jesus all this time, Jesus was talking to them about this kingdom to come and what was going to be happening. And so when we're in when we're in this chapter, in chapter 5, we're recognizing that God is setting us up to see what is going to happen in the next. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And those in heaven, those on the earth, those under the earth, there it is again, that same language, again, repeated, everyone will kneel will bow and will confess yes, yes. Um, my bible says uh, this bible says that um, the exaltation of christ is uh, proclaimed as universal it's absolute when it describes above the earth under the earth yes on the earth yeah and all of heaven it's yes. universal universal Amen. We agree. And that's that is what we look forward to is that time where we get to, we get to live in this kingdom. Okay. Let's look at your notes. When Jesus takes this seven sealed scroll from the Father, the scroll represents the title deed of the earth and the battle plan necessary to cleanse the earth. Now, do you believe that um, when God created the heavens and the earth and then he um, he was ready to create man. Do you believe that God had a plan if man failed? Or did God wait for man to fall at Genesis 3 and say, oh, we need a plan B? <laughs> Do you think that was God? No. God had it figured out from the foundation of the earth. Remember, he said, I was, that lamb was slain from the foundation of the earth. They God had the plan. God the Father, God the Son, they. God the Father, uh, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they had the plan already in place. There was no like, oh boy, we've got to have something else happen now. No, it was already in place. And so, yeah, surprise, which is really no surprise. He, God knew when he created us with free will, he knew what he was getting into. It was no shock. So, but... He had the plan for Revelation then as well. He said, at one point in time, I'm going to let man get to their most wicked place. He watched this with Noah. He watched this with the Tower of Babel. He watched this with Nimrod. He watched this, you know, he was like, I see this wicked man I have, you know, created. And I see what's going to happen. And we're going to shorten their years so we can actually make it 6,000 years. <laughs> He's like, we're not going to make it at this rate. Let's shorten their years. They can't live to be a 1,000 anymore. So let's take it down. And I don't think that was a surprise either because right. he had the plan. You know, okay, we'll do that now. And, but I think it was, I think maybe he was surprised at the timing. Hmm. I always think God 
uh, thinks that we're going to do better than we do. You know? I, I, I think he has the best thoughts about us, and he's like, come on. But I think when he got to, uh, who was it that had to shorten the years? It wasn't Abraham. Jacob. Where was he? What did he close? Where did he shorten the years? It was right after the tower. Balaam. Where? Baal. Baal. Well, it was already short then. Babel, or you think a Tower of Babel? Um, that is after Tower of Babel, but it, it just began to get shorter and shorter. And there's a one, there's a scripture in Genesis. It's yeah. in Genesis. Right. It's very early on. So we know that God when he short started shortening the years, it was because it was for our own good. Yeah. Because he knew if you could learn good in a number of years that was good but think of the evil and those who would turn their hearts to evil yeah. it's not like I mean we know what it's like when a young child let's say a 16 year old goes out and commits mass murder mm -hmm. we know that that can happen at 16 imagine living yeah. for a thousand years yeah. with a evil mind mm -hmm. getting evil worse yeah. and worse and worse and tapping into worse things it just gets to the place where you're. You, God's like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't do this. So he had to slow it down, and mm -hmm. so that we could actually get to six thousand years. But here we are again, right? In the days of Noah, mm -hmm. where we're seeing things, and we will read about the days of Noah. Okay, so <coughs> what? So this title deed is the battle plan to get us to the kingdom. So that is our battle plan. So that is God's battle plan. We can just be in agreement, right? Yes, Jesus. So Genesis 6-3, that's right after Noah, right? Spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were still giants on the earth in those days, and afterward when the when the sons of God came into the daughters of men or children to them, those were mighty men of old, men of renown. So there was still all of that wickedness taking place in Genesis 6. Shocking. Okay. So Noah actually, let's see, Gen the flood's right after this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't the flood after? It's in Genesis 6, the wickedness and the judgment of man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah, Noah. There we go. Okay. So that was Genesis 6. Mm -hmm. So that was where we were just before, but there were still giants afterwards, we know, because John, uh, David did, it long did not take us long to get back. I think 2,000 years since Jesus' day. And Jesus, I believe, brought a big shift when he came back into who he is, but here we are again. Okay. So... The scroll, I just want you to think of that. And as we go through this work, we're going to solidify that thought process more because we don't hear about the title deed very much. I don't hear anybody preaching about it very much except for uh, those who teach on this all the time. Okay, what is the day of the Lord? Uh, there's two extremes. This is in your notes about the middle of the page. Two extremes related to Jesus return. Here's what Joel 2 says. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? In Mal uh, Malachi 4, it says, I will send you Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The great day of the Lord refers to the unusual events, both positive and negative, that will escalate in the final three years before Jesus returns. It is his day. No one else's. Not the Antichrist's. In fact, we're going to go, who is that Antichrist? Yeah. See, that old wicked, that dog? <laughs> we don't know who he is. And no, he, he doesn't get a day, but God does. Jesus will act on earth with great power for us, his people, and against his enemies. He will show himself as the great warrior king who will aggressively confront sin. He came the first time as a lamb, and this time he's coming as a lion. All right, the time this time will be a blessing for the redeemed and judgment for those who refuse him. Jesus' judgments will shake all that can be shaken on the earth. Um, what is the tribulation? There's the question. What is that word tribulation? Now, the word tribulation is not uh, necessarily in this book, but we know that this will be a time of distress, 
and suffering like none other time. That's what Webster's Dictionary calls it. Um, we mark the tribulation as the first three and a half years of the seven years. And can I say that's 1,360 days. And I think when we actually know, boom, when the start of the tribulation is, we'll be marking the days. <laughs> 1,360, okay? The, so the first three and a half years is 1,300, uh, yeah, 1,360 days. And the second half is 1,360 days. And there's a 30-day period at the very end of that that we're also going to talk about. All right. So just put that in your file it in your mind, and we're going to keep going. Here's what Jesus said. This is such a powerful scripture because it's, think about John 16. We know John 17 is the great prayer of Jesus, right? John, here's what John 16 says. Jesus said, everything I have taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you. What a shocking statement. Everything I have taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, or some Bibles say tribulation. But you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. Now this verse is going to be one of our hallmark verses. One of the times we went through the book of Revelation I realized this is like God's hallmark verse. This is his hallmark card to you. <laughs> Every time you get concerned you go back and you say wait Jesus, yeah. everything that Jesus taught me. Everything that Jesus taught me. So we're getting close on it is awesome we're getting close on time so i want to i want to stop but um, you can what is the purpose in god allowing the great tribulation this is on page five i just want to do that real quick and then we'll stop and it is to purify us through affliction to aid in the great ingathering of souls including the salvation of israel to vindicate the saints to expose false believers in the church and to demonstrate God's power in protecting his people. He is able. He is able. What did, what did Shadrach, no, not Shadrach, uh, Shadrach, Shadrach, Abednego, Hananiah, um, Azariah, and Mishael, what did they say? If you save me, we're not, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not going to bow down, right? <laughs> and that's what we can say. Old Babylon, old Babylonian system, we are not going to bow down. But if our God, our, we know our God can save us. They were fully confident. Yeah. Fully confident. And so if we perish, yeah, if we die, we die. But if he saves us, to God be the glory. Doesn't matter. Either way, we know who we serve. We're not bound down to the Babylonian system. Okay? All right. Doesn't that give you confidence? Yeah. Because everything he taught us was so that we would go through this yeah. and be okay. All right? Yeah. And that gives us complete peace in our hearts. Here's what Daniel 11 says. Some of those understanding shall fall or be martyred to refine them, to purify them, make them white until the time of the end. Uh, Daniel 2 says many shall be purified made white and refined but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand I wonder what it is what they do what they are thinking when they are murdering people they've got to be standing there and, and I know our beloved believers in many other countries are going through this and those those guards have to be standing there going you're still serving this Jesus who are you and what on earth is this uh, God's judgments will remove. This is this is another key statement in this whole study that we'll go back to over and over. God's judgments will remove all that hinders love, Jesus is love, by removing the props that we trust in. Anything I trust in other than God's word needs to go away. And the temptations that we refuse to resist. God wants to do that. And here's his principle of how he does this. God uses the least severe means to reach the greatest number of people at the
the deepest level of love without violating anyone's free will. Can I trust him? Can I trust him? There's the big question. Can I trust his plan? Can I trust that his word is true? Will I be taken care of? Will I, will I make it? Will this hurt? <laughs> right? That's another one of ours. Will this hurt? <laughs> Don't we sound like children? I mean, it's good for us to think, let's get our answers now. I know God will take care of me. I know he will, I can trust his word. Do I have to control the narrative? I told, I think I told you last week that I used to say, you know, there'll be a sniper rise up and he will kill that antichrist. He will not be allowed to rule on this earth. That was my escape mechanism, you know, from being a very small child, learning this whole thing from a fear standpoint, thinking somebody will wipe him out. And that was the way I could sleep at night, you know. Right? But we know that Jesus has this, all right? And he and told us not to fear. Don't fear. Do not fear. 366 times. So, do I have to control the narrative? No, because his narrative is the only one that works. <laughs> You're loved for all eternity. Learn it now. Now's our time <laughs> to practice. Every difficult situation, we say this is another test, and I want to get through this. Ugh. All right, lift your offering before heaven if you have one, and let's just thank the Lord Turn this off. for His grace. Good. Yeah, I'll pray for. I'll just pray for them too. I'll pray for whoever's on here. I'll lift my my bag anyway up to heaven. Father, we just thank you first of all for for who you are, because you are King of the Universe, mm -hmm. and you do hold the title deed to the earth. Mm -hmm. We thank you that you control everything, that your hand is on this, that you you don't demand that we um, do anything. You gave us free will to follow or to not. And Father, we just ask that you teach us to follow you in a greater way. Teach us to trust you like never before. And we, Father, we just want to lay down all of our props, all of the things that we are leaning against. Because Lord, we know that you're going to show us more things that we're leaning against. Fear of lack, fear of pain, Fear. We want to be set free from all of these fears that are stopping us from being bold and being confident in who you are and knowing who we are. So, Lord, we just ask right now, thank you, Father, that as your Holy Spirit just begins to move on our hearts right now. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to move on our we give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to speak to our heart. This week when we're contemplating these things, remind us of what we are fearing. Remind us of what we haven't yet said yes to you about. We said no. The no is in our heart, not the yes. God, forgive us for the no's and help us, Father, to recognize why we're saying no so that our, our no will turn to yes to you in Jesus' name. We just give you praise. Holy Spirit, deal with our hearts right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, we just say our offering before you is to say that we know you have all provision in heaven for us. It's all safe with you. And Lord, we're just investing into your kingdom. We give you glory and praise. We say your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. You are the king of glory forever, forever, forever. Thank you, Lord. All glory and all power, holiness unto your name. Be the one who was and who is and who is to come. Thank you, Father. We just give you glory for your provision for us. We say we'll always have the right amount of toilet paper. We'll have the right amount of food. 
we'll have the right amount of whatever we need. Maybe we won't have abundance. Maybe there'll be a time of scarcity. But Lord, we know that you're going to take care of us. And we're going to settle our, Lord, we just pray right now that as we study your word, that, you're, that you will settle our hearts. Settle our, settle our hearts from having to control everything. Settle our hearts in Jesus' name. I'm going to tell a quick story. When you're on the mission field, there are times when you have zero control <laughs> of anything. And I can think of a number of times where I felt completely out of control. But I knew who was in control. And I remember one time specifically thinking, I am going to starve to death. <laughs> I laugh now because at the time it was like, you would have been better off, Stephanie, to starve to death. <laughs> I just did not like the food. There was one country I was in. It was so horrible. But the, the thing is, I would, uh, when that was happening, well, and then I had a missionary that would say, we're fasting today. <laughs> and you would go, oh. But anyway, because <laughs> that's not always fun, especially when you're sweating bullets. Oh, I mean, yeah. you are, oh, yeah. it is hotter than crud, and you just need something for energy because you feel like you can't move. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I just remember thinking, quieting myself. And I think that's something we all have to learn. You know, when you're a baby, you can scream bloody murder. But at some point, we have to learn to quiet ourselves. Yes. And to take strength from the Word of God. Yes. And from knowing who is in control. Right? So let's practice that as we go through our life now. In fact, I'm doing it now. I'm saying, appetite? Stop it. You're not in control. Right? Yeah. Man, it's aggravating. Because yeah. then life wants Good to man. rule. You do not rule. No. Right. <laughs> you can't have ice cream every day. What are you thinking? <laughs> but you can't have it. You know, it's not that we can't enjoy. We can't. But it can't rule us. Excess, yeah. That is the key. Excess. So, Father, just teach us. Mm -hmm. Just teach us. And I have also found that when I give that to Jesus, he, can, he controls what I want to eat. It's okay if I have to eat that, whatever that rice and sauce is. <laughs> From whatever that is, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's okay when you let him. Okay? So, Father, we just give you glory. May the Lord bless keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. Just, I just thank you, Father, that you lift our countenance, that you give us joy, that you give us peace, even in the most difficult situations, even when we're grieving, when we're suffering. Lord, we know that you just, we can just say, Lord, we just reach out and say, quiet my heart. Help me know that you have this in Jesus' name. Let's see. May the Lord bless and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Thank you for the favor of God upon each one in this room. We just ask for the blessings of heaven, the sleep from heaven. The, you are the beloved ones. We just pray right now that all of us will sleep well at night and that, that your hand will just heal our bodies to the top of our heads, the sole of our feet. We call upon your healing. In Jesus' holy name, we give you all glory and praise and honor. Jesus' name. All right. Amen. Amen.